If you have a Bible with you, open your Bible to the Gospel of John, chapter 3. Better come Tuesday night, those are pretty good candy canes, I'll tell you. <laughs> but I want to talk about something that's very, very important, and that is, why did Jesus Christ come? I mean, why did He come? He came because we're all sinners and because we needed to be forgiven and the only way we could ever be forgiven was for Him to satisfy God's justice in our place. That's the only way we could ever be saved. Yet He did come and the motive for His coming was because God the Father loves us. He loves us so much. In fact, the greatest gift that you and I will ever receive is Jesus Christ Himself. Jesus is our best gift. We can learn some things from this verse. It's a verse that I think many, many people know and many people have memorized. It's John chapter 3, verse 16. And uh, it is my custom to ask people if you found it in your Bible. If not, it will be on the screen. Is to stand with me and to read Scripture together. And so I want to pray for God to speak to our heart. It's not just words. What we're going to be reading is God's very word, the words that He spoke and that have been recorded in the Bible for us. Would you join me for prayer? Father, speak to us now. Help us to understand that this one verse, it contains such great news, the best news we'll ever receive. The, the fact that you gave your son Jesus for us. So now speak so we can hear your voice. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're in John chapter 3. We're at verse 16. It reads this way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And even the children would know. I ask them, that, well, how long is that? And they always say, forever. Forever, preacher. You may be seated. Well, I want to share four things with you that this little verse, but such a very powerful verse, shares with us. The first one is, for God so loved. For God so loved. God loves us because God is love. In fact, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And it continues. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us. God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sin. That word propitiation is a long word. We don't use it much in uh, our current vocabulary. It's a word that means he paid in full the debt that we owe to God. A debt that we could not pay. And Jesus Christ paid that in full. He is the propitiation. He gave himself and paid with his life for our sin. Suffered the whole wrath of God in our place. So First thing is, John 3.16 teaches us about the love of God. The second thing it teaches us is that we are the objects of, or the recipients of God's love. It says, for God so loved the world. Well, he doesn't love worldly ways, but he, what this represents is the people that live in the world. We, you and me, we are the people that he gave His Son for, God the Father gave His Son for you and me, we are loved by God. We are the objects and recipients of God's love. God loves you and me, and wherever you are, God loves you. You know, whoever you are, wherever you are in all the world, there are some in this room today who have children who have gone on the mission field. Others of you know missionaries, or you've read stories about missionaries who go on the field, they go all the places around the world, and the reason that they go there is they go to let their light shine. You sang about it. And they, they go tell it on the mountain, but they also go tell it in the jungles and in the deserts and 
all over the world, many places. And the truth is, no matter where people are, God loves them and He loves us. He doesn't discriminate because of race or age. He doesn't discriminate against men or against women or against boys and girls. He doesn't have favorites. So whether you're rich or whether you're poor, whether you're young or whether you're old, <laughs> God loves you. And that's an amazing thing, you know. Would you just turn to somebody and say, God loves you? Let somebody know. <laughs> People who don't know God think that they're going to be blessed based upon whether we have been good or bad. That's the, this. That's what happens so much, right? I had somebody tell me the other day, they said, well, I think you're going to get a lump of coal. Not talking to me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, they said, you're going to want to go. And the whole purpose of that was, the comment was saying, you know, they're teasing, but they were saying, you know, if you're good, you're going to get good things, and if you're bad, you get a lump of coal. And I got to say, no, I certainly was bad, and I certainly deserved less than a lump of coal. Instead, God gave me a son. That's pretty amazing, and that means he loves you too. If, if Jesus died for me, I know he's willing to die for you if you repent. People who don't know God have that terrible misunderstanding. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past life. God still loves you. No matter who you are, God loves you. God loves you with an everlasting life. It's not a, it's not a kind of love that kind of, maybe he loves me, or maybe he'll love me today, but not, not tomorrow, or he loves me this morning, but... Next year, he probably won't love me anymore. And Have you ever felt like that? You wonder, you know, I did something or I said something or I should have done something and I broke my word and I didn't do it and now I don't see how in the world God could love me anymore. I got news for you. God still loves you. He hates sin. Be clear about that. He hates sin, but he loves us. If he didn't love us, he wouldn't have come to die for us. We certainly didn't deserve that, did we? <laughs> No way. No one deserves that. In fact, Jeremiah 31.3 says, The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an, there it is again, everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness I've drawn you. The reason why somebody comes to faith in Christ. I mean, I'm curious to know how you got here today. I would like to know how many of you saw, saw something about our church on the internet. Anybody? See, I see some over here. Anybody else saw something on the internet? Okay, over here. We are on the internet. We're on, uh, we have our own website. We have, uh, we're on Facebook and YouTube and Pinterest. That's because I like pie. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, but we're on all these places. But the reason why we're on these places is so we can send a message. So we can go tell it. And we tell it in all kinds of ways. Okay, I want to know, how many of you are here today because somebody invited you? Always. Always. Well, that's the most important thing. The reason somebody invited you is actually somebody else loves you. Your friend or family or neighbor <coughs> invited you because they care about you and they wanted you to be here today to celebrate the birth of Christ. And I'm very glad you came. I want you to know that. Before we leave today, I want you to know I'm very glad you came. I hope you come Tuesday night. We're going to have a Christmas Eve service. It'll start at 6 and end at 7. And I do that every year because I want us to stop and remember, what's the reason we have Christmas? Jesus. It's the birth of Christ. Yeah, it's about Jesus Christ. It's about His birth. And we stop and we don't just go on doing whatever. We stop and we celebrate the birth and... We have a good time doing it Tuesday night, but you come and join us. We always do it every Christmas Eve. And people will leave and say, okay, I feel like it's Christmas. <laughs> the right reason. John, you know, John 3.16 teaches us God sacrificed His Son because He loves us. That's another thing that we learn from this passage. It says, for God so loved the world. He didn't just say, I love you. Like some people say, I love you. And it really doesn't mean a whole lot doesn't cost anything. You can say, I love you, I like you, whatever. But when you say, I would give my son for you, that's a demonstration of the love of God. 
I thought about it, you know, we've got children and they're all different. And we love each of our children, we love our grandchildren. And I was thinking, would I be willing, seriously, not in, not in jest, <laughs> but seriously, would I be willing to give one of my children for someone else who had sinned against me? Would I want one of my children to die and take the punishment for someone else who sinned against me? That's the love of God. He gave His Son. That's a pretty amazing kind of love that He demonstrated in that way. In fact, Romans 5.8 says, God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. And 1 Corinthians 15.3 says, I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. We're talking about the Bible here. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is true. In fact, Jesus Christ was, he died, he was buried, he rose again. He was witnessed by over 500 people. I don't know if you ever heard that before, but it's true. He was seen by over 500 people that he was alive again after they knew he had died. He really is alive. And John 3.16 teaches us something else. That if you're a believer, you can receive the gift of God's love. Romans 6.23 6, says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. It's like this. Have you ever bought a gift for someone and you offered them the gift and then the person wouldn't accept it? They were mad at you or for whatever reason they wouldn't accept the gift and you're offering them a gift. No, please take it. I want you to have it. No. How do you feel when you, offer, you go and you select a gift for someone and you offer the gift to them and then they won't accept the gift that you've provided for them? It hurts because it's not about the gift, it's about you giving yourself to the other person, isn't it? That's what it's really about. So, when God gave the Son for us, He intends for us to receive Him. Because the gift is available, but actually the gift of Jesus Christ is not yours until that moment when you make a decision to repent of your sin and acknowledge Jesus died for my sin. And you accept Him and say, I want to accept, I'm willing to accept Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. And that moment when you accept the gift, then the greatest gift ever becomes your gift. That's what it is. So, receive Christ. If you don't receive Him, the gift is available. He's there for you. But if you haven't received Him, He's not yours. Whatever you believe, if you haven't received Him, you don't have eternal life. You don't have forgiveness yet. Whatever it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever, I think in the King James it says, whosoever, it's actually the only place where whosoever really means whosoever. What it means is anyone. I don't care who you are, what you've done in your past. If you're willing to repent of your sin and believe on Jesus Christ, you're one of the whosoevers. You're the person that can say, no matter what I am, what I've done, what I've failed to do in my past, God loves me enough to give His Son to me. I want to ask Jesus to forgive me and be my Savior and the Lord of my life. And you receive Him and He's yours. And you also receive the precious gift of eternal life. But John 3.16 says is not enough. To be saved and to receive eternal life, you can't just believe the words. You need to believe on Jesus and receive Him. Does that make sense? It's not just thinking the words and saying, well, I like the words that sound good and I like it. It's receiving Christ. That means you can't just keep on keeping on doing what you used to do. you got to say, I'm going to give my life to Jesus. It's a good deal, though. I like bargains. This is the best bargain ever in eternity. I give Jesus my life. He gives me his life. Who came out on that? I did. 
I give Jesus my life, and you can trust him, and he gives me his. That's the best deal you and I will ever be offered. You could be here and hear this, and music, by the way, was fantastic. You all did a great job today. Thank you. Amen. But I, I also know this. The music's great. The message in the music is even greater. And these who worked so hard to prepare today would want every one of you to know the availability of the gift of Jesus, to make a decision to receive Him today, and to leave here today a new person, born again, a new life, forgiven, and living a whole new life the rest of eternity. And that's possible for you today. He already paid the price with His life. It's up to you to receive Him. John 14, 6 said, Jesus said this way, I'm the way, and I'm the truth, and I'm the life. No one comes into the Father except through me. Some of you might say, well, that's very narrow and bigoted, isn't it? I don't think I'm bigoted. I think I'm telling you the truth. And there actually is no other way except Christ. He's the only way. And if I were to stand here today and say, oh, there's many ways to go to heaven, that'd be about like telling you that, you know, when you're in an airplane and you're getting ready to land, the pilot comes over the speaker and says, you know what, there's many ways to land in this airport. I could come in from the north, south, east, or west. I just want to show you how great the brakes are on this thing. I'm not coming in lengthways. I'm going to show you I can land on the runway this way and stop. It's a bad idea. Sounds like more fun. But it's not the truth. And we laugh. But the truth is there's only one way. And his name is Jesus Christ. He doesn't accept any other way. There's nothing you can add to him. And there's certainly nothing you can take away from him. He's the one and the only Savior. I'm telling you the absolute truth today. Jesus Christ is the greatest gift. God the Father offers His Son, Jesus Christ, but Jesus is not yours until you receive Him by faith. And I think it would be appropriate for us to stop and to bow our heads and to talk to God right now. Friends, I can't save you. If I would, I, I mean, if I could, I would, but I can't. We have to talk to God. And He's here in this room right now. We're not alone. God's here. In this room.